This podcast does not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or Department of Defense. Welcome back to the Soul to Pro Live podcast, and I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Olivia Nunn. Today, our guest is Colonel Retired Greg Gatson, and you may have heard that name because he had a little part in Hollywood, but more importantly, he's been an amazing leader and advocate for the veteran space, particularly in his own story. So, sir, thank you so very much for spending your time here with Soldier for Life and getting after your story all about you and how you are such a voice and champion about advocating for yourself and growing beyond your life's challenges. Well, good morning, Olivia, and thank you for having me here. What a pleasure to 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 be here. Um, you know, um, just sharing my sharing my story and really, uh, you know, still interacting with uh, with our service members in the army. So, sir, let's start at the beginning. You are a West Point graduate. You graduated from the prestigious academy, and you served our nation proudly and admirably. And you've done amazing things in your career. So let's start there. What led you to West Point? And did you think that you were going to have a career that was going to lead you to retirement? Or where was it? Where, what were you thinking? Well, well what led me to uh, uh, West Point was a, was a plan that, uh, that life didn't follow for me. I, I, like many kids that, that play football in high school, I wanted to play in college and I wanted to play in the pros. Um, as uh, fate would turn out, um, the the opportunity or the path that I saw to play to go to the pros uh, wasn't going to happen, um, you know, for me getting a scholarship at a at a major uh, Division One college football, and so that only opportunity for me was the United States Military Academy at West Point. Um, um, as fate would have it, uh, the, the the coach that came to recruit at my high school was actually recruiting another player and uh, my coach told him about me. And, and, and so we, we ended up taking a visit to West Point at the same time. And um, I never heard of West Point, didn't know what it was about, but they, they played division one football and I, I had my heart set on uh, doing that. And, and, uh, and so that was the path I, that was plan B. And plan B ended up being, what appears to be a great plan. So, sir, you went forward, you graduated, you commissioned. What did you commission as? And what are some of the uh, highlights, if you say, of your career and how long was your career? Right. Well, I was uh, I was commissioned as a field artillery as a red leg. Um, had um, um, and my first assignment was in three core artillery Um um, where you know it did the, the the normal lieutenant jobs. I was in a in an a eight inch howitzer self propelled unit. Um, most of the most of the audience out there probably won't even recognize that uh, that weapon system. That's how long ago it's been. Um, I would serve in the eighty second. I would serve in the twenty fifth infantry division and first uh, infantry division as my tactical uh, assignments uh, deployments through the first Gulf War. Um, uh, uh, Bosnia, um, Afghanistan, and uh, Iraqi freedom were were my uh, operational deployments. Um, uh, as a battalion commander in the First Infantry Divi- uh, Division, I was wounded um, by an improvised ex- explosive device during the surge. Um, ultimately, um, those injuries uh, cost me both my legs above the knee and and, and a, a pretty uh, damaged right arm. Um, but I was fortunate to be able to um, to obviously survive and recover from those uh, from those uh, injuries. Um, um, I applied to stay on active duty through a program uh, called Continuation on Active Duty, and uh, was approved to to uh, uh, to stay on active duty. Um, about three years after I was wounded, so in uh, early 2010. And um, um, I was I finished up my war college f- fellowship that uh, uh, th- that that uh, that spring, and uh, assumed duties as the director of the United States Army Wounded Warrior Program. Um, a little less than a year later, I was um, well, I was promoted uh, later that summer to the rank of colonel, 
And uh, the following year, I was selected to uh, to uh, for brigade level command, and uh, I, I finished up. Uh, well, I took command of the U.S. Army uh, Garrison Fort Belvoir in uh, in June of, uh, of 2012, and um, and in June of 14, I gave up uh, command and retired in in uh, in, uh, in September of 2014 after 26 years. Sir, I want to go back to one part of your story, because specifically this particular conversation with you today is rewriting your story. No one, you didn't know, nobody knew that your chapter was going to take you down a road where injury was going to change the way your life was going to be. And I've had the opportunity to meet you on and off throughout the couple of years, and, but really had the chance to sit down with you a few weeks ago. And I remember part of the conversation was your time in, in healing and that mental process that you went through and that choice that you made. Can you share with us what you were talking about, about that choice to decide where your fate was going to go as you were recovering? Right. Well, um, you know, in my case, Olivia, and maybe, you know, it's, I, I don't want to say, I, I mean, I, I, I'm tremendously blessed. The, you know, every, everything that's happened in my life, um, you know, ultimately has, um, um, has kind of worked out for me, not necessarily how, how, how I envisioned it, but, but certainly, um, you know, every day is, is, is literally a blessing. Every day that I'm, uh, I'm alive is a blessing. Um, you know, as I said, I, I, um, you know, ultimately, uh, the injuries from the, the, um, IED, um, attack in, in May of 07, um, uh, cost me both my legs and, and like, um, you know, nobody, you know, nobody has a, a blueprint, nobody envisions their life, uh, with, with such injuries. And, um, and I was no different. And I, I think I came to a point, I would tell you, I came to a point where I, it just wasn't something that I could, you know, visualize. And I just felt like I, I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up um, because I couldn't see a future. And I, I, I thank God that that really wasn't who I was. I, I had never quit in my life. I had fought through everything that uh, every challenge that I had in life. And, and in my lowest moment, in, 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 the, in the darkest moment of my life, when I wanted to quit, I just couldn't quit. It just wasn't who I was. It was just, it was absolutely unnatural. And, um, and so, uh, honestly, with a, with a few expletives, and, and uh, I, I just kind of made the decision that I was just going to just live my life. Um, that's all I could do. That's all I could do was just to take one day at a time to stay in the moment, be the best that I could be today and, 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 you know, let the chips fall where they fall. And, um, and so that was that decision. That was that moment where I just said, you know what, I, I'm just going to trust. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust that my hard work is going to, is going to get me through this. And, um, and I'm not going to worry about what it looks like. I'm not going to worry about what anybody thinks. I'm just going to be my best. I love that. I love how you acknowledge that at the core of who you are didn't change, regardless of your circumstance. And that's what you tapped into. I also want to talk about, so here you are, you've made this choice. You've decided that I'm going to live my life and that this isn't going to stop me. And when you made that mental shift and the doors started opening, what were the doors that opened for you? Well, um, you know, what? Um, it was uh, from things like uh, uh, speaking. I mean, that was probably um, I had a I had a West Point uh, classmate and teammate that happened to be a coach for the New York Giants. And and in, and in 2007, um you know, their, their, their season, uh, they started out struggling and they were winless when they came to Washington to play the, uh, the football team here. And, um, and he asked me to kind of share, you know, my, my experiences, you know, uh, about having things not go the way you want, about not quitting, not giving up and, and believing each other and believing in those around you. And, and I was able to kind of, you know, quickly take them through, uh, you know, my perspectives on those things and, 
and I, 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 I got a little uh, notoriety. I got a little way too much credit about uh, helping to turn their season around. And ultimately, um, that journey for them and, and for me being a part of it would, would lead to uh, Super Bowl 42, where where the Giants would uh, ultimately be victorious against the New England Patriots. And and so, you know, I've, I've got a Super Bowl ring. I mean, I've been on TV shows. I've been in and on the big screen. Um, but, you know, I, it, those are all kind of things that kind of sh- shine a light on me. And, 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 you know, I, I'm grateful, but at the same time, um, you know, I, I don't really seek that light. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's being here with you today, being able to, to, uh, to still connect with my former soldiers, um, having soldiers reach out to me, having them share, um, uh, having them share how them knowing my story has made a difference. Um, that to me is what I'll cherish. That to me is what is what gets gets me up and what motivates me to just again be my best self. That's all I can do. That's all I have control of, Olivia. You know, you are so very humble. And let me tell the audience of how humble you are. So uh, the event that I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with you was one where um, Freedom to Links put on an an event where we were able to see one of the coaches from the Washington national football team, as well as one of the players. And so that's the highlight, right? These two celebrities, if you will. And people were lined up to take photos with that, with those two individuals and get their signature and things like that. But here's what I saw. I saw a line twice as long of the soldiers that came and the family members that came that wanted to talk to you because they wanted to hear you and what you had to say about the very thing that goes to the core of who we are as leaders in the Army. You know, I've said this before. The day that you no longer want to mentor and develop a soldier, see yourself out of uniform. And I think you epitomize that, that even beyond your time and service, you're still giving back and you still wanted to connect. And that's the beauty of it. And I love that you said that. And I really want our audience to to know that you truly mean that you are authentic in that, that you really, it isn't about the accolade. It isn't been the fact that you are on the big screen or on television or even have a, you know, Super Bowl ring. It's simply Colonel retired Greg Gatson giving back to the community. And I so love that. And thank you so very much for that. You bet, Olivia. So here you are. You've kind of done some amazing things in the Army. You've commanded at some of the highest levels and your civilian life has taken off. What is it that Greg Gatson is doing these days besides giving these speaking motivational events and connecting with our military community? What gets you up every morning? outside of that? Well, um, I, I, you know, believe it or not, I, I've got to, I realized that I got to take good care of myself. Um, you know, um, um, I, I got behind a power curve with my health, obviously, um, uh, losing my legs changed, uh, you know, changed my, my mode of exercise and, and, um, I, and, you know, I, I have to I have to say that I'm, I'm a type two diabetic and I have to manage, uh, you know, manage my health uh, based upon dealing with uh, with diabetes. And and, um, you know, for instance, one of the things that I, I did uh, uh, during uh, this, the covid pandemic was I, I was able to lose almost 60 pounds and I got my A1C back to uh, a normal level. And and so, again, I know that I can't be my best. I can't do my best. I can't, uh, I can't serve if I'm not alive, if I'm not healthy. And so, you know, uh, I go back to taking care of myself. And so every day I try to make time to, to take care of myself and exercise, you know, um, you know, my body, mind and spirit, the, the triad of, of, of our health is our, is our sleep, is our nutrition and our exercise. And, um, and so we build as a habit um, in the military, and and I tell you, you you should maintain it as a habit when you when you transition. Um, it's just it's just a good practice. It's um, retirement is not excuse not to take care of yourself. You you've worked so hard to earn the the to earn uh, your retirement and 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 uh, to um, 
And so you want to live it out as long as you can. And, and the only way to do that is to take care of yourself. Thank you for that reminder that we need to take care of ourselves. And congratulations that you were able to not gain COVID weight, but to take it off. No, um, thank that's you. a feat in itself. So congrats on that. But All I right. do like how you talk about taking care of our health, our our whole self. You know, it is so easy as leaders in the army to want to put that on the back burner. Right? We give of ourselves. It's mission first. And I have to admit, I am one of those, right? Here I am on my road to retirement. I'm technically here sitting on terminal leave or otherwise known as transition leave. And I'm still m- messing around with my medical to get it over to the VA, right? So, right. Uh, you know, it's such an important reminder and to remind our leaders that not only do you as leaders need to take care of yourself and go get those appointments taken care of, but allow your soldiers to do the same. Yep. You owe it to them to take care of them. Absolutely. Set the, you know, set the example. And, you know, I say you can, you can go to the heights of, of this organization. You know, the army goes rolling along. It doesn't miss a beat and you need to take care of yourself. If you're unwilling to take care of yourself, then how can, what expectation can I have that you're going to be really willing to take care of, of the folks that we entrust you with? And so, um, you know, the example starts with you, it's, it's not selfishness, it's selflessness. And so you just got to take time to, uh, to take care of yourselves and your families. Um, uh, so, um, I, I, you know, this is, I, I, in, 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 in another vein, I would say, Olivia, um, you know, the generation before me, those Vietnam vets, those veterans that served before us, um, sharing their lessons and, and paying it forward, um, that that's my mission now. That's soon. That's your mission. That is really your mission now. And you will continue forth with that is paying it forward. Um, we are, um, you know, we're paving the way for the, the next generation that's going to serve. And, and so I, I almost think about, think about being in uniform for 25 years. If I, if, if I live, uh, another 25 years or, or beyond that, I will serve more out of uniform than uh, in uniform. And so, um, it's just, again, there's just so much to give. Absolutely. You know, something that you just said that kind of made me, you know, chuckle a little bit on the inside that the institution is going to go rolling along. And it's so true. And I've said that from the very beginning that the Army has existed before me. And it'll exist long after me. And I'm just a simple cog in that tiny wheel. But my impact can be great if I choose to lead well. And taking all of the examples and all the great leaders before me, such as yourself, and taking those nuggets of wisdom and putting that in my rucksack and living that out every single day. Sir, Time is is so important to each one of us, right? But, and I know I could spend hours talking with you about everything in life, your lessons learned, the the pearls of wisdom that you can bestow upon myself and our audience. Sir, but I'm going to leave it with you. What is the one last thing that you really want our audience to know about you and your life story or anything else? Well, um, what what I've, I've nibbled on it a little bit here this morning, Olivia, but, um, you know, we only have one life to live. And, and, and so, um, what I want, what I want to try to leave you with is, is remember this, um, um, we, we want to be our best, you know, we have to strive to be our best and we can only be our best. Uh, we know when we're the best, we're accountable to ourselves, but in order to, to facilitate being our best, we have to be present. And we can't be present if you're holding on to the past and we can't be present if we're living a day that we that we're not promised. We have to be present. Enjoy the journey. Be present. Be your best. And, and that to me equals peace. Um, I doesn't mean I like everything that happens, but if I'm my best, if I'm present and I and, and my and I'm my best and I can be at peace and um and so make the most of this journey. It's a cliche. Life is a life is about the journey. It is. It's not about the destination. You, you're going to you're going to be officially out of the army here in a, in, a, in, in, in a short period of time. And and that is just a moment. That is just a waypoint. And, and so um, 
Uh, des- it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. So enjoy the journey. Embrace the journey. Love those around you. Carry that love and 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 uh, and and not hate because it destroys you. And um, and that's really what I want to live you with. Thank you so very much. I can't top that. I think that is some of the best piece of advice that we have gotten in a while. Living your life in the present so important. Sir, thank you so very much for spending your time. You are incredibly amazing as a leader and as a friend. And also the fact that you are truly authentic, which is something I talk about all the time, bring your authentic self. And I love that you do that. Thanks for everything that you do to advocate for our military community, for being a leader, for lighting the way and showing how it's done gracefully. So sir, thank you so very much. You bet. Thank you, Olivia. Once a soldier, always a soldier a soldier for life.